Hey guys, this is Sarah and today is Wednesday, April 29th, which means it's time for another Top 5 Wednesday. Today's Top 5 Wednesday topic is Top 5 Favorite Series Enders. Last month we did Worst Series Enders and today we get to do Favorite Series Enders. And I'm so excited because isn't it much more fun to talk about the things you love than talk about the things you hate? Before I get started, I want to mention some honorable mentions that I finished recently that I love and are great series enders, but that I did not place on my list because when I made it, I hadn't finished them yet. So first one is The Iron Knight by Julie Kagawa. This is the last book in the Iron Fae series. So, so good, you guys. I am so happy with it. I feel like it was just everything culminated into one. I know there's a novella that comes after that, and I know there's like a side series, like a companion series that goes after that, but that ending was so good. And the other one that I want to mention is Ignite Me by Tahira Mafi. I feel like I still can't talk about it because it was just that good. So please follow me on Goodreads so you can read my review if you've read it because I can't, I can't right now. In spot number five is Mockingjay by Suzanne Collins. I know a lot of people don't like this book and I am one of those that really did enjoy it. I feel like it is a very real representation of what surviving something so despicable really is. I mean, a lot of people wanted like happy endings and smiles and forever, but post-traumatic stress disorder happens to people and I feel like it should be a consequence to the majority of dystopian characters. And it isn't. It is here. And I find it so real and so true that I just cannot help but love it for its honesty and its raw emotion. And I just absolutely adored the series and this ending. In spot number four is The Fallen Five, or better known as Armageddon by Thomas E. Nagoski. I read this series the last couple of months. I feel like I finished it in January, something like that. And that last book, like, oh, man, there's so much stuff going on. And everything just kind of crashes together. And you don't get the resolution you want, but you get the resolution that you need. And I love those types of books that the kind of things that you want to happen are not realistic and the authors keep it true to to what should be and either way it was a very satisfying ending and I feel like more people need to read this series even if you don't like angels or fallen angels or stuff like that it's so good it is so dynamic Ugh, read it please in spot number three is United We Spy by Ali Carter this is the last book in the Gallagher Girl series. I love the series. I love Allie Carter. I love her kick-ass, strong, spy women. And everything just fixed itself in this last book. There was so much stuff, so much pain and sadness and emotions in this series that it doesn't really seem like it because it's supposed to be like light and fluffy but there's a lot of stuff going on and I'm so happy with the epilogue most of mostly like it's not even an epilogue but that last tidbit of what life is like if this character is now it was just so sweet and I want to reread this series again at some point because that's how much I love it. In spot number two is The Blood of Olympus by Rick Riordan. Again, a book that some people did not enjoy, but personally, I adored. It's strange because there's still open threads in this series. There's still some things that are 
not as developed as I would like them to be, but, I mean, everyone kicked ass, everyone is alive, everyone is relatively happy and safe, so considering all the crap this group of friends of characters have gone through, those three things, I'm happy with that. I'm just, I'm happy that they have that. And in spot number one is Bitter Blue by Kristen Kishore. This is the last book in the Graceland Companion Trilogy, and it was the best one. The best one out of all of them. I absolutely adored this last book. Even though it's a companion trilogy, all three books connected some way, and all those connections were brought forth in this last book. There's a lot of mystery, there's a lot of secrets and lies and cover-ups and things like that, and we get to finally make those connections and finally, like, start fresh from something awful, and I just absolutely adored it. Bitter Blue is such a great character, a very honest character, a very real character, a very vulnerable character, and I absolutely adore her. And if you have not read this series, you need to get on that. Some people don't like the second book as much, again, because it's a companion, and it kind of throws you off a little bit, but once you get to the third book, everything will make sense. So push the second book, if you have to, and get to the last book, because everything will make absolute sense when you get to the last book. Yes? Okay. So that's it for this video. Let me know what your favorite series enders are. I am in the goal of starting and finishing series, like, intensely. I am so behind on series that I want to read. I have 30 unfinished series and way more series that I want to start and finish because I was so behind in those two years of not reading that I feel like I need to play catch up with everyone and be more involved in fandoms and so on and so forth. So I'm really not, I'm reading a lot of series and I'm finishing a lot of series. So I want to know what your favorite is to see which ones I bump up to my TBR, which ones I bring down on my TBR. Help me out. Help me choose what to read and what not to read. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.